Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And the world of Skyrim is a very magical place. Indeed, while some of the locals may view the practice with great superstition, the arcane arts are a simple fact of life for anyone living in this icy region of Tamriel. And sure enough, the game offers literally hundreds upon hundreds of different spells and shouts for the Dragonborn to use. Or see used against them, depending on what kind of foes you're facing. However, beneath the dozens and dozens of mediocre flame and ice wall magical attacks, there are a few particularly unique spells and other magical effects that even today, nearly a decade after Skyrim's release, many players likely still don't know a whole lot about. So today we'll be taking a look at five more hidden magical effects you may have missed in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Starting off, Daedric armor is quite possibly among the most fearsome looking sets of apparel offered in the entire game. Made from ebony, one of the strongest minerals in the world, and infused with the heart of a Daedra, as well as a black soul gem, each set of this stuff looks menacing, and boasts stats that walk the talk. However, did you know that when wearing a complete Daedra getup, that means the helmet, the boots, the gauntlets, and the chest piece, you're not just benefiting from that combined armor rating, but you also receive a unique, somewhat hidden, magical active effect. You'll immediately become 10% more effective when attempting to pass intimidation speech checks, implying that other characters are now more afraid of you. The power is technically hidden from your menu, and it can only be seen from the game's files. However, it's not hard to test it out and prove it's there. You see, whether or not you succeed in an intimidation speech check isn't actually left up to chance. The game calculates your player's level, plus your speech skill level, adds those numbers up, and then subtracts that number from the level of whatever character you're speaking to. If you end up with a number higher than zero, then you pass the check. So, say you're level 50 and you have a speech skill of 10, adding up to 60, and you're trying to intimidate somebody. So long as their level is 59 or lower, you'll pass. But when donning a full set of Daedric armor, you can now be up to 10% lower in your combined character slash speech level than whomever you're talking to, and still successfully intimidate them. So uh, not only does Daedric armor make you stronger, it also makes you quite a bit more persuasive. Next on our list, we have one of two entries in today's video that I'm kind of cheating with, as we have a spell that, while very much exists within the game's files, is totally unobtainable to the player without the use of console commands, as it appears to have been cut from the game mid-development. Nonetheless, I give you Polymorph Skeever. When added to your magical inventory with the console and used, this greater power will allow the Dragonborn to transform into a Skeever indefinitely. While the power's description claims the effect will only last 60 seconds, in actual practice, it lasts forever when used. So make sure you save the game before activating this strange effect. Otherwise, you're going to be a Skeever literally for the rest of your playthrough. When in rat form, the player becomes totally incapable of interacting with any items or characters, save for followers and containers. So you can loot from chests and order your companions around, but that's pretty much the extent of it. Furthermore, the player's carry capacity is instantly reduced by 70%, alluding to the fact that you are now literally an eighth of your original size. Now, as you can probably already infer by the gameplay you're seeing on screen, Polymorph Skeever is a bit of a buggy mess, which is likely at least part of the reason why we never see it in-game. The camera's positioning is weird, it's like awkwardly low for whatever reason. If you had a weapon equipped while activating the power, that item will be visible just below your Skeever's body, and in my experience, attempting to attack or shout as a Skeever literally always resulted in a crash to desktop. So, clearly Polymorph Skeever wasn't the most polished element of the game. That said, I'm still curious to know what this spell would have looked like had it made it in and been a bit more fleshed out. 
How would we go about obtaining it? And what quests would it be connected to? Perhaps there would have been a group of were skeevers held out somewhere who could have taught us it or something. Whatever the case, clearly twas not meant to be. And while we the Dovakin can do many things, transforming into a skeever is not one of them. Coming in at number 3, the quest, Unfathomable Depths, is certainly one of the weirdest in Skyrim. It may begin after the player has reached level 14 or higher. At this point, while you're on the Riften docks, it's possible to be approached by a clearly mad Argonian woman, named From Deepest Fathoms. She'll rant to the Dragonborn about some box she stole from a dwarven ruin called a Lexicon, and beg that you return it for her, kicking off the mission. Long story short, you'll be sent to the sunken Dwemer settlement of Avanchizel, where you'll find strange ghosts of some previous adventures, who went in here to steal the very lexicon you're now returning. Including the ghost of From Deepest Fathoms, despite the fact she's still alive. But I digress. After seeing some ghosts, solving some puzzles, and fighting your way through a whole host of some dwarven traps and automatons, we can return the lexicon, and the mission will be completed. And you'll be rewarded with some XP. And that's that. Or... Is it? Because on top of the experience you get for completing unfathomable depths, you also get a new 24-7 always active effect called Ancient Knowledge. And what it does is pretty interesting. Thanks to quote-unquote knowledge gained from the lexicon, the Dragonborn now receives a 25% boost to their armor rating but only when and if you're wearing Dwarven armor pieces. So if you've got a full set of Dwarven armor that normally adds up to 100 points of protection, now that number goes up to 125. Or if you have a Dwarven chest piece that offers 60 points, now it will protect you with a value of 75. You get the idea. Furthermore, Ancient Knowledge will also result in the player earning XP for the blacksmithing skill 15% faster. Apparently, as we learned during Unfathomable Depths, the Lexicon was a sort of information repository, storing the thoughts, experience, and memories of countless Dwemer back in the day. You know how in the real world we sort of talk about one day uploading our minds to a USB or something? Well, the Lexicon was basically a hard drive full of innumerable Dwarven minds, and evidently our time with it resulted in some knowledge rubbing off on us. It should be noted that this armor rating boost isn't much of a laughing matter, as it increases the armor rating of a full Dwarven set from 104 points to 130, which isn't actually all that far off from the hypothetical numbers I gave earlier. But compare that to a full set of Daedric armor, which offers 144 points of protection, and is considerably rarer and more expensive, it's only a 14-point difference, making Dwarven armor, like, really good. So, what are you waiting for? Go find that lexicon and make it happy. For fourth spot, we are still not done analyzing Dwemer-related powers, because now we'll be taking a look at a bit of a hidden ability, or quite frankly, let's be honest, more of an exploit, pertaining to one of the potential rewards for completing the Dawnguard DLC side quest, Lost to the Ages. So, I described this mission in depth, literally last video, so I'll be brief as possible in the synopsis. Lost to the Ages centers around the Dovakin's efforts to rediscover and repower an ancient metalluring device called the Ethereum Forge. The Ethereum Forge was allegedly built by the dwarves thousands of years ago, meant to be the only furnace in the world capable of tempering a legendary mineral known as Ethereum. TLDR, after a few puzzles are solved and dungeons are cleared, we find the forge, turn it on, and that's the quest. As a reward, you'll be able to use the forge to craft one of three different Ethereum artifacts. A staff, a shield, or an ethereal crown. For the purposes of this video, we're going to be focusing in on the crown, as it comes with a unique enchantment that allows the player to quote, retain the last standing stone ability, granting those effects in addition to those of your current standing stone, end quote. What this effectively means is that when wearing the ethereal crown, 
you can have two standing stone effects active at the same time. So, for example, say you recently got the Lady Stone ability, which grants a 25% increase to the speed of which you regenerate health, stamina, and magicka. Well, now you can have that in tandem with, say, the Steed Stone, which increases your carry weight by a factor of 100, and removes any weight penalty attached to equipped items. You can combine any two stones you want, and once you take the crown off, you'll simply lose the effect of the stone you equipped prior to your most recent one. So, if you got the Lady Stone first, then got the Steed Stone, in this example you would lose the Lady Stone ability when you took off the crown, but get it back every time you put it back on. Well, and this is where things get fun, there are some Standing Stones that, rather than grant a permanent magical active effect, they grant powers that are only meant to be usable once a day. Such as the Thief Stone, which allows you to instantly open any lock that's expert level or lower once a day. There's also the Shadow Stone, which allows you to turn invisible for 60 seconds once a day. Or who can forget the Ritual Stone, which allows you to reanimate an unlimited number of corpses in a 75 foot radius to fight for you for 60 seconds, so long as they're level 75 or lower. If you have one of these once per day powers attached to the Ethereal Crown, simply taking it on and off will totally reset them, allowing you to use these abilities as often as you please, so long as you're willing to take your hat off a bunch of times. This effectively makes the Ethereal Crown one of the most powerful artifacts in the game, transforming powers meant to be elusive and sparsely used into accessible as ever. And mind you, most of them don't even have any base magicka requirement either, allowing you to resurrect hordes of bodies, turn invisible as often as you want, or break open locks pretty much free of charge. So, a big shout out and thank you to the Ancient Dwarves for making our lives just that much easier. And finally, to wrap this video up in a nice little bow, we have the Spectral Arrow. Much like Polymorph Skeever, which we covered earlier, Spectral Arrow doesn't actually find itself in the playable version of Skyrim. It's a cut spell, one we can only access by forcing it into our magic menu with the power of console commands. What this magical conjuration spell does, in exchange for a base cost of 50 magicka, is allow you to shoot arrows effectively out of your hands, each one doing 30 points of damage a hit, as well as staggering enemies with a value of 25 points. On its surface, Spectral Arrow is an insanely powerful spell. You see, normally, the strongest base arrow in the entire game is the Dragonbone Arrow, and it only does 25 points of damage, so you're getting 5 more than the strongest there is with the Spectral version. That said, that statistic is kind of misleading. You see, the way arrow damage is normally calculated is by adding up the base damage of the arrow itself, combined with the damage value of whatever bow you're using. So, in reality, whenever you use a Dragonbone arrow, you're probably doing closer to 40 or 50 points of damage a hit. This is kind of balanced out by the fact that the Spectral Arrow can be fired pretty rapidly, most bows need to be knocked and drawn, whereas the Spectral Arrow can just be fired at will at whatever speed you please, straight from your hands. So, I suppose at the end of the day, both have their advantages. Being a Spectral Arrow, you won't be able to pick these up off the ground either. In fact, they don't even seem to have a projectile animation. Whenever you fire one, you'll simply see a weird tracer of air, but the actual arrow itself is relatively invisible. Some additional notes about this spell is that it's casted completely silently, even regardless of whether or not you have the silent casting perk. This means it is absolutely amazing for stealth-based gameplay, and its damage value can theoretically be increased depending on how high your conjuration skill is. So you could make this a pretty powerful puppy. Enemies with high magical resistance, however, will pose a unique challenge, as the higher your foe's magical resistance, the less effective this spell gets. So using it against mages may not be the most effective way to go. Regardless, Spectral Arrow is an interesting, relatively hilarious spell that it's a shame we never got a chance to actually use for ourselves. And with that, we are going to wrap up. Five more hidden spells and magical effects you may have missed. 
in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Part 2, I believe. Thanks for watching, everybody. Which of these various arcane elements did you find to be the most intriguing? And what spells, powers, and shouts do you know of that you think deserve a mention? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Again, thanks for stopping by, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.